Good evening or good day wherever you are. Hello, hello. I hope you're all doing good. I hope you all had a great week so far. I think we will wait a little bit until more people are joining. Who's in the chat? Who's here? joining <laughs> can actually switch this the screen already I think we're just gonna wait for a couple more minutes for more people joining before we continue the demo. I hope you all been good. I hope you all had a wonderful week. It is Wednesday and uh, yeah. What's up, what's up? How's it going? How's it going? Welcome, welcome. Um, what is up from my side? Um, I just finished my work day, basically. I had a full day of working. Um, and yeah, basically I've, I've done a lot of drawing today for work. Um, but it's, it was pretty productive as normal. And yeah, I can't wait to continue finally with the project now. Just doing something else, just paint and everything. Thanks, back from Germany <laughs> to India. <laughs> hey Weibo, welcome to the stream. Hey Naman, how's it going? I work for Vuga, it's a mobile game company. I work as an environment artist. What are you doing? So, um, let me actually just tell you guys what we will do today. So um, on the last stream, we started with the study for, the, for this environment and we didn't finish it because we basically didn't have enough time to do that. And it was also asked to push the study further and then show the next step, which is basically applying the knowledge that we just um, soak up and what we just learned from the study. And um, what we will have or what you have as an option when you want to learn from your study is um, you have basically two routes which one is the first one is at the end to take the sketch you have already made for your study and then try to recap rethink what you just painted and basically to paint that again um, which is not so interesting of course um, and it's it's if you look at it it can be a little bit dry because you basically try to paint the same thing again but if you're a beginner i would highly recommend to do that because it just trains you on the observational skill of your painting um, and the other option is to use your study to accumulate it for your own painting um, and that and also we are in the in the process of doing studies for our fantasy project right now um, and usually i would just do a study and then continue with the design part but um, it was asked on the last stream if i can show the process of applying the study to my own image which means um, the schedule for today will be 
first we will continue with painting this to a certain level um, and I think I will I don't know how long the stream will go but um, we maybe can paint that I would say 30 minutes an hour and then we should move over to make a drawing for our own image technically and um, I have a couple ideas already um, but I haven't touched anything before because it was a super busy work week so what we basically will do we work on this and then we move on we will make a drawing a sketch a, a, a fast sketch hopefully um, just sketching out an idea and then we try to use all the information we just painted here and use it on the image um, and that's just a very good process if you start with art because of course um, most people don't want to do dry studies they don't want to take an image oops they don't want to take an image and just um, copy the image which can teach you something but you can also lose yourself in the process of copying and you don't want to really copy it even though I have done it a lot um, before like really just copying one to one um, but what you really want to do is really take all the necessary informations and then move on and creating your own art and when you work on a bigger project and you work on some specific topic you've never worked for then you will have certain roadblocks like maybe you haven't maybe you never painted a, a dense forest before maybe you never painted um, a desert before maybe you never painted trees in a certain environment before um, and the biggest skill an artist can really learn and accomplish to become an artist is learning how to learn and that's just the process of it and that's what we will do today Bonjour. Comment ça va? I'm happy to, I'm happy to have you Weibo. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Um, if you if anyone has any questions before we start, just um, ask them right away. Um, I don't know if you have seen the 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 last stream from last week where we started this image. Um, I can go through the layers quickly just to just to show how we um how we did that so let me check let me check um... hey abraham uh welcome to the stream and thanks for the twitch follow so what we did last week um we let me close all that so we approach it in a very simple way. We started with the sketch. And close all that. Um, do I still have the sketch somewhere? Oh, I maybe, <laughs> I maybe accidentally uh, merged the, the sketch with something because we were super rushed last week. So um, yeah, we basically started with very simple shapes, um, just adding certain tones and it was also very saturated. Then we just added um, shadows on a multiply layer and light on a um, light linear dodge add layer. Then what I usually do, I duplicate the whole folder, merge it so I can continue to work on one layer and then we just started to adding more details um, and we were trying to analyze the image while um, deciding how much information we want to push, what is necessary, what is unnecessary, um, just moving with that and continuing with this. And then we merge this again, desaturate it a bit. And ah, here was the sketch. Um, here was the sketch. Let me make this also in a folder maybe. So that was a super rough, super quick sketch. Um, and we also wrote down where were the shadow sides, where were the light, the light um, side, where the light shapes were created. So we could keep an eye on how we want to approach the image because um, when I do my morning studies, I try to approach the study in, on the most efficient way so I don't waste any time. And uh, yeah, and that's basically where we left off. I haven't touched a thing since last time. The only thing which I did was just preparing the next step for later today, um, which is basically just I put some side reference images for the next step when we 
try to use the information we have here, um, the light setup, the foliage, the colors and all the informations to create our own image. This will be maybe challenging, I don't know, because um, again, I haven't prepared a sketch. We will also make the sketch. And um, yeah, we, may, we maybe have to cut on the sketch a little bit. It really depends on how much time we have, um, but I'm very positive and I think we can really um, push that. And welcome everyone else who just joined the stream on Twitch or on YouTube. Feel free to say hi in the chat so I know who's there. Hey Naveen, how's it going? How are you doing? How was your week? Okay, we will, uh, that's no problem. If you have any questions, just uh, type it in the chat and I can maybe answer it. We will also talk a lot about um, the technical aspect of painting today and just on approaching. By the way, can you give me a feedback on is the music too loud or is it um, right on? Can make it a little bit quieter, maybe like this. Right on, nice. All right, all right. I wonder if Celine is here. Celine, are you there? Because she was uh, asking for the for this. So um, would be actually good if she's here. Cool. By the way, I also um, have a book here on the side with me, which is, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's, uh, it's a book on architecture. And uh, I think I mentioned it on the last stream. That's something I really like is when I start new projects, it's buying books, buying used books also, um, just getting more um, resources and also more keywords I can research when I do those type of studies and those type of projects because it's sometimes hard just to research images because you maybe don't know how things are called and if you have a keyword for a certain architecture element or something and you know the word of the element then you can directly do a keyword research and then you get way better um, way better images Music feels perfect. Noise. All right. Okay. Um, so let's continue with the painting first. And I have to take a look at it also. Just to see where I left it. So we mainly established the overall light. Like I would say we established overall um, a good base for this image. What we haven't done so far is obviously all the detail of all the foliage, all the leaves and everything which we have in the midground and in the background. And uh, what we can also always do is add more um, volumetric light. Um, and what we can or what we should do is also maybe define some sort of um, selling point here. That's also something you can decide to do because of course like a study never should be the um, you should never be like feel forced to make a super pretty image because it's just an approach of learning. I think also people shy away a little bit um, of the word of like studying because it, it sounds so dry but it's actually kind of cool if you try to learn something and then you just analyze it, paint it or draw it and then you start to solve your problem and then you realize, okay, cool, I just learned something here. All right. Also, usually I, I work out very zoomed out for the, the most of the stage of, of painting and drawing. But then if you start to refine certain things, we can um, zoom in closer. So let me zoom in here a little bit. Okay, so I think what we should do first is maybe um, work a little bit on the ground. Because what we want to capture is um, not only the, the light situation, 
um, but we also want to capture the shapes which get created um, and that's also something which you maybe not see on the first side but if you do that more often you will see that um, created light shapes and shadow shapes are actually um, giving this, an image like this like which is just a forest just that certain interesting um, visual noise um, so that's definitely something you should look out for when you paint your own stuff all right let's let's go let's do it probably will also talk a little bit less from now just to just, to, just not to lose the not lose um, the focus we also need to watch the the time a little bit but for now let's just paint this for a bit to soak up all the last information and when we pushed it to a certain point we will also write down all the all the notes everything that we observed and learned and this is here really up to you um, and it's also up to the stage where you add if you are interested in learning painting in general you can paint this image as far as you want to it's really completely up to you the question is really like what is necessary for you and from which point on are you not learning anything more and if you have any questions just type it in the chat I will keep an eye on the chat in between and otherwise maybe draw or paint along or just chill. So we need also to unify just everything a little bit. And when you see the little orange dots here, that's still from the first um, for, from the first moment when we added light with the linear dodge layer, uh, which sometimes gets a little bit too saturated. And we, I mean, that's you can see that, but it's something you can easily adjust later on. And what also really makes sense, just like give yourself a certain time you want to work on some on some certain areas on the image so when we say okay I want to work on the shapes and shadow shapes and everything just give yourself a certain time because we also want to <coughs> work a little bit on the foliage and just having fun with that. And I'm using here an opaque brush. So it's technically just a round hard brush, which is a little bit uh, where the, sh the shape of the brush, brush is not round anymore. It's just um, squeezed and a little bit, has a little bit of a rectangular shape. the shapes the light and shadow shapes on the ground then we can add a little bit volumetric light it's also pretty simple
and I try not to spend too much time on that just that we can start with our own image because I believe that's what the most people want to see but it's still important that we that we push this a little bit and that we also and that I also get into the groove of painting because as I mentioned I just drew all day which is not bad but it's just good to get into the mood in the mode of of painting again what I'm looking at is at the moment really just that oh, can I not draw over that here what I'm looking at is that here like all the all the little sh all the little <clears throat> all the little shapes and all the um, very interesting horizontal um, strokes I can possibly make with the brush what is nice here for example is that part where the stone get hit by light and you also have very big contrast here so if you imagine using that for your own image it could be a possible story point could be maybe a graveyard or could be a certain um, piece of a ruin or something also the the images the reference images are from a, a reference pack which is called Asian forest you can find on gumroad um, unfortunately i cannot share the images because i bought them but you feel free to to get them they're really nice very nice images and you support those type of artist resources how's the chat going do, do, do. let me scroll up um, about character design making centric characters in in weird environments feel easy but how does one think while designing a simple character like that. Um, Naveen, can you elaborate with your question? I don't know 100% your question. What, like, what is really your question? Hey Mike, how's it going? I'm doing great, thanks just finished work and I'm happy to stream how you do how you do how was your day hey um, oh man you have a you have a good name let me try it ore ore how kai kami ore oh wow that's the name I, I shorten it and I, I call you Kami, okay? Um, yeah, welcome to the welcome to the stream um, and happy to have you here. Oh, Kami. All right. Oh, Kami is good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, welcome to the stream. Happy to have you. Ah, you from uh, you followed from the Brainstorm series. Have you watched the vlog or did you watch the last episode? Good, good. Doing pretty good myself. Spent all day modeling a snake skeleton for new piece. Nice. Mike, share it in the share it in the uh, Discord later on. I want to see it. Or is it for work? I mean, if it's NDA, don't share it, obviously. What is everybody else working on? You guys know I'm curious as always. So just adding a little bit more light indications just for the depth of light. So I have a lot of yellow here on the ground still, which we can remove a bit. It's a little bit too saturated. So 
adding a little bit more white but always be careful with adding light uh, white not light white Also for all the people who are interested in character design. So on Saturday I interviewed um, a character designer as mentioned. I'm already on editing the video but um, yeah my week was just super full and uh, I don't know when I have the, the video ready but um, I think it will be interesting for a couple people. Um, and also interesting for people who want to work as a character designer because we spoke a lot about how to get a job as a character designer which is a very interesting topic. So we can also use a little bit the smudge tool just to smudge everything. Wait, let me see. All right. Still, like just working zoomed out makes the most sense because we don't have to. Yeah, we don't have to spend so much time on adding too much detail here. It's more important than it reads good from far away. And also in production, you would spend way more time. On a, on a big environment piece so there's no no hassle for us it's just important that we can communicate the important part here the music is kind of nice the last couple of weeks we always listen to happy to the happy EDM playlist but now we are listening to lo-fi it's pretty chill um, do, 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 do. personal stuff I don't get a lot of work yet you will get there Mike um, Naveen said like I'm working on a story where a boy is too afraid to interact with his dad I am so confused on what I look to give dad Okay, so your question is how you decide the the father is gonna look. Um, I mean that's that it really depends on the setting. It really depends on on the story. It depends on the heritage of the of the of the main character. If you still do the work for your um, Indian project, maybe you just have to yeah to look up more references. Or maybe if you have a dad, just look how your character, the boy, is looking and then imagine how the boy would look when he's older. So that would would be a very solid approach. By the way, I will probably be sign up World Building 2 at Brainstorm next week. Nice. That's nice. If you do that, please update me on Discord in the, in, in the chat. I want to see the homework and the results. Yeah, don't worry, like, you know, if you consider 800 bucks or 700 bucks, it is still a good investment because it's like the, the things you will learn are just like, it's so valuable, really, trust me. I, I, haven't, I haven't tried the world building classes, but I think you will learn something. Just make sure that everything before your foundation, like perspective and everything is solid enough before you go um, for a class like that. Because if you have trouble on drawing like certain architecture types, houses and stuff, then you can maybe have problems in classes like world building because I, I imagine you have to draw a lot of stuff there. Because I think like, I, I also understand that people want to do the exciting classes with all the interesting stuff and all the entertainment things. Um, but what you really shouldn't forget is like focusing on the foundation first. Otherwise you cannot execute your idea very well. Um, color studies, studied 
started day with a head construction but took a deep dive in color theory and now you're addicted <laughs> that's good that's great <laughs> yeah colors is also so relaxing it's just so much fun okay okay let's continue with this Adding little nuances here, little shapes. Okay, let's move over a bit. dark lines we see on the ground are just cast shadows from the tree branches. Also, on a certain point when you do those studies, it's really just losing yourself in there, having fun. Painting environments and landscapes and everything can be really, really a lot of fun. It's like being at the place, being in nature. Just like you can also start to imagine, okay, how would it feel to be in that environment? How is it when the warm light is hitting my arm, which goes, comes through all the tree branches and everything? So we can add a little bit of volumetric light let me just All right, let's bring that beat back. duplicate that merge it yep okay and using the smudge tool is very handy because you can really use a hard round brush and just smudge in between the edges so you don't have to take a soft round brush then in between, it just saves a lot of time. This here, what we're doing is really a pretty, yeah, I, I, I want to say traditional approach, if you can call it. Like, I'm always, when I paint, I try to think like I'm painting with uh, gouache which is a very opaque medium. Okay, let's add a little bit of 
warm volumetric light to that. <coughs> Take a bit of red, darker saturated, and then gently work in more reds. But we need to make sure that we don't oversaturate it. I mean, at the end, it doesn't matter, but. Give it a more of a natural field. I feel. It's also what creates this very interesting color contrast of the warm light and the cool vegetation. So let me turn that on and off. It's very gentle. Mm -hmm. um. Hey Yaroslava, welcome to the stream. Um, I'm doing body silhouette breakdown since I tend to overcomplicate my art with detail. I'm trying to get better on simplifying. That's very good. Simplifying is not easy, but it's absolutely necessary to learn. Um, Mike said, I'm always struggle quite a bit with putting the ideas in my head into an actual piece. Like I know what I want to do, but I don't know where to start. Usually I'm just gonna dive into instead of trying to figure out most of the times works and stuff. Mike, just write, write it down, write it down first. If you have a certain idea, just write it down and you don't have to write it down so detailed, just um, figure out certain keywords which could resemble your idea and then start to research your keywords, just type it in Google and see what type of images are coming. And then your brain is automatically starting to, um, to create a certain idea. But also that's something we will do today. So maybe just, maybe uh, maybe you can see this today um, when we do that, when we move on. Getting good ideas is one of the things I struggle with most. Like I have tons of ideas, but usually don't know which are worth making. Hmm. I would say that's, uh, that's, I mean, getting, getting a good idea is the part where most of people struggle. If you have a lot of ideas, that's good. Just, I would just um, take the, if let's say you have five good ideas, take the best three of them and then dissect them and see which has the most potential. The music slaps. Yeah, it, it makes me tired as well. <laughs> hey, Klimp into space. Welcome to the stream. Hey, Anosh, I have the issue where I mostly stick to using one single brush for a painting, which I really love though. I have the feeling this might be not so good. What's your opinion on that? If you have one brush and you can paint the image you want in the in the time in the amount of time you want to to get it. Um, there's nothing bad about that. You can you can use the, as simple brushes as you want. You can technically paint everything with a hard round brush and use the smudge tool to soften the edges. You can also take a hard round brush and a soft round brush. You just have to be careful. Um, and obviously it depends on what you want to achieve, what type of look. If you do something very graphical, where you don't have any um, soft edges, then you don't even need necessarily any soft brush or like any smudge tool. It really depends on what you want to achieve, you know, it really depends on the style you want to achieve. And if you work a lot of digital, I would always recommend also to look at traditional work, like how old masters painted certain things like Sargent, for example. I really love this brushwork because he was very efficient, but he also used the rhythm of hard, soft, hard, soft edges very well. Um, I hope that answers your question. If not, just say it again. Um, where do I get my brushes or do I make them myself? Yeah, my brush set is a mix of uh, brushes I made myself over the years and um, 
and some of I don't know some I collected from different brush packs. Um, it's a it's a big mix, definitely. It's a mix of everything. Also, when you <clears throat> when you work as 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 an as an digital artist, so when you have a day job where you work every day, um, it is also important that you back up all your brushes. So I also have my the the amount of um, backups I have from my brushes. Um, I don't know. I think the brush set I have saved for twelve times on different devices because. Um, for for example, I had um, I had a hard drive which just crashed crashed last year where where was a lot of personal work on. I lost a lot of PSDs, a lot of data basically, and um, it is good that I save like the most necessary stuff um, on different devices um, because you never know when like when when the when when the devices are um, yeah. Uh, I don't know dying I also don't know what happens to the device back then but um, it was ve it was very shitty I not only had personal work I also had uh, work for my for my job there and I had to re redo everything um, that's the worst feeling and I am and I lost so many PSDs from all my challenges and everything it was so annoying but what what do you want to do? I mean, at the end, it's just it's just art. All right. <clears throat> um. Dun, dun, dun. Let's speed up a little bit the the process here, so we. Use the lasso tool now just to make the shapes a little bit more quicker. It's important that it reads when you zoom out, which kind of does. We can add a little bit more white, little white highlights to the to the ground. But again, be careful how much you take and how much you add. little dots like little little things which directly get hit by light just to add a bit of this magic magic feel what we get walking through an Asian forest that's how the reference is called by the way It's just an indication of that. We can go a bit brighter and a bit warmer on the foreground. So we just gently add red. Also, I explained how to use that color wheel um, here on the top right on the last stream. Um, so if you want to know how that, that works, just watch the last recording. 
how much time did we spend? 25 minutes. Okay, we need to speed that up a bit. So I directly go over here to work a little bit on the foliage in the foreground. And again, just indicating stuff. Just can be a bit brighter. Just try to think, okay, what is the shape of the foliage? Don't try to copy it exactly, just try to think about the shape and then think of it in a brush stroke. Is it a horizontal brush stroke? Is it a vertical brush stroke? And that saves a lot of time. It's really, the approach here is really very traditional. Like if you would paint it with a brush. That's why if you want to learn painting, um, painting traditional uh, can really help you to understanding painting better. Because you have certain th certain things you don't have like undo and stuff. <laughs> also, um, what is in a very important part of painting is silhouetting things out. So if you have an object, an element, can be a house, whatever it is, and it stands in front of the camera against the light. To make it read, you have to silhouette it out, which basically means you um, first make sure that it has a hard edge around, and later on you can use your artistic decision and oops, um, add more soft edges. So now we try to indicate this bush here in the front. There's also an interesting part happening where certain part is hit by light. But there's also a lot of shadow going on, which creates contrast. And again, we don't want to paint all that, all that noise, just indicating. I see most of the stuff I do with the same brush. Keeping an eye on the time. I think we're still doing good. Give the bush a little bit more love here. Slow it out. Um, I'm sorry, I missed. I missed a bit of the chat. Duh, 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 duh. Um, yeah, I lost them once. I was so scared. Hundreds of them are gone. Yeah, that's that's so annoying when that happens. <laughs> yeah, uh, Clip, it's it. I mean, you, what do you want to do? It's it's um, I don't know. It's just you can't change that. So if you realize that you can basically that you can basically paint everything with a simple brush, then it technically doesn't matter so much, but you can also buy a, like there's so many brushes you can buy. So if I would run into a like big trouble, then I can also buy just a brush set from somebody. 
Also, the good thing about Gumroad, all the tutorials, like most of the tutorials have also brush sets from certain artists. So if I really would lose all my brushes on my PC, I have also my Gumroad library with all the tutorials I bought in the past, so I can also download them. Hey Hannah, welcome to the stream, I hope you're doing good. Oh damn, Hannah. I feel you, I, I understand that. <clears throat> How long do you plan your study to be in general? Are you trying to make them faster or maybe trying to get most out of it for longer studies? So I don't, in the past I spent too much time on my studies. So I really wanted to um, want to make pretty images. Also, it was a little bit stupid because I also wanted to make them pretty for Instagram and stuff. Um, which is maybe the, the, I would say, which is maybe the wrong goal to do a study, you know, just to show off and stuff. That's kind of, kind of stupid. I mean, you learn something if you paint a lot because you learn a lot of painting and stuff, but um, at a certain point you need to be, you need to be like smart about your time because time is very valuable. And if you want to use a study as a study, then it makes sense not to spend too much time. So my, like my goal here is to, for this demo is basically just to show you guys how to do a study to use it for your own project. So if you have any roadblocks that you get a f understanding on how to basically to learn how to learn. That's, that's the, the key thing here. Um, Naveen wrote, have you worked in any animation production? Yes, I have worked in a, um, in, in a movie animation production. It was, it was actually my, f I think my first job ever. And I painted backgrounds for this. I, I, it wasn't backgrounds for the final stage. It was production. So basically I had to paint um, environments with uh, certain moods. So you get a script, you get a briefing. And then when you have the briefing, you basically are um, like, you get it from the director and it, it stands like, okay, the main protagonist is in the scene in a forest or anywhere else. And then you basically have to make a painting and the production schedule um, was like this, that I had to make a, a painting a day, which can be stressful, but if you plan ahead, so when you plan every painting ahead every day, then um, it's doable. But of course the quality cannot be that high because if you only have a day and a day of work is then eight hours, of work or nine hours of work but also sometimes you tend to work even more on this movie production because movie productions have a short amount of time where you work on them um i love when find the right gray tones in the colors you want to blend um i don't know if that's a question or if that is just a point you wanted to make <laughs> sorry <laughs> i love when find the right gray tones to gray gray tones in the colors you want to blend it's not a, it's not a nightmare naveen it's you it's you get used to that also um that's maybe also a little misconception of being an artist for a living that everything is is just a relaxation sitting there painting what you want drawing what you want because most of the time it it means also a lot of stress and a lot of pressure so um but it, i would say it's nothing nobody can handle you get used to that and it's a trade on the other side you you paint and draw for a living you know so I rather have more stress and paint and draw than doing any other job, to be honest. Because I also did different jobs in the past. So I'll, I, like every time I think about it, like I would say I worked my whole life. As a teenager, you know, so I really know the how it is to have different types of jobs so i'm so thankful for the position i am in <clears throat> but
But yeah, you get used to it, Naveen. It's really nothing to be afraid of. So it seems like this is a little bit too cool. So we can go a little bit warmer. How's the value? We can make it a bit brighter also. Let's take the big brush here. Let's see if that works. Oh, I think that works. Again, it goes warmer, so we go more up on the color wheel. careful with the brush because we don't want to get the image too soft because it's a very soft brush. What is really fun, if you look at the background, all the dark s places in the in the background create those negative shapes. And you can basically ca carve them out. So we started with a very flat tone and then now we just take a darker tone and now we just carve out all that stuff. Add a little bit of this. Every tree needs a friend. Also, can also spend a little bit more time on the tree himself. Adding more detail. Everything looks a bit flat here. We need, really need to make sure that we just spend our time now on the most necessary parts. And again, you can do that as long as you want. You can paint that for a week. You can copy it until infinity. It's just important that you understand when you need to stop that you don't learn anything anymore. Yeah, what is interesting is now the edges. Edges of this big mi mid ground foliage. So here just giving certainly su just simple horizontal strokes where the light is coming through so here just to change this a bit So now adding a little bit of form to the tree himself because uh, we know like form change equals value change. So it means we have to take a little bit of a darker tone. So the, the, the tree in the back doesn't look so flat. Thank you. 
Also at this point I would start to think about the notes I would write down um, before I continue with the next image. Usually I would always write down notes that could be like the certain type of um, observations I did. I don't know, um, uh, for example, the leaves get um, very saturated when they get by the warm, hit by the warm light or um, like uh, the light shapes and shadow shapes cr created um, of the dappled light on the ground have a certain shape. I would maybe sketch out the shape, um, sketch out just the observations I made. Because you can save everything and then we take everything away, just try to, to paint our image. And when we, when we think that we maybe not um, saved so much we can just take our study as a as a as a cheat board i would say because at the end it's your study that's what's the purpose of your study so you can look at all the notes all the things you've done and then you easily can rethink of um, all the informations everything you observed but in the beginning i would always um, do it without it just to see if we have certain learnings Yeah, and you can also use more texture brushes, of course, just to save time. It's really up to you. I just enjoy taking a simple hard drawn brush here. Like sketching. Like sketching and painting is really, has really no big difference for me. can also add this here. What are those? Ah, these for example are highlights on the leaves. I mean they look a little bit, they could be butterflies to be honest. I mean of course it would be a little bit weird also, so dense maybe, but it's very interesting because it creates a lot of high contrast. Um, there's also the question on how much do we want to do that because technically like when I look on the image, I would look either here, wait, I w would look either here or would look either here, just because of the contrast. Um, you have a very strong um, dark to light contrast here. So we could, uh, we could decide really if we want to add those white highlights here or not. But it definitely um, shows that, uh, that there's light coming through. And you see here that's really just the process of adding more detail. Also don't get don't get scared by all the all the informations. If you're unsure just simplify, take certain things out. The study doesn't have to be perfect. What did you learn along the way to become more time efficient when painting every day? Oh, um, what did I learn? Hmm, that's a good question. I would say I definitely learned to focus on the necessary parts. So um, really to capture light conditions, capture light and shadow. Um, and I would say I also learned how to communicate the focal point of the image. 
because if you only have a day to make the image, um, you need to communicate the story. Okami wrote, okay, I see, I'm trying to do a study a day, but I feel like I spend too much time on it, two to four hours or more. But since I have a lot of assignment to do as well, I struggle a bit. Um, yeah, Okami, just keep on going because if you, you will get faster with this. In the beginning, it's always just taking more time. I mean, of course, if you add, if you want to accomplish more every time you do a study, then of course it, the timing doesn't change so much. So the question is really why you do your study. Do you do your study to warm up? Do you do your study to learn a certain thing for your painting? Um, is that really like, I think you should really ask yourself why you do your study. If the study is necessary um, and also the amount of time you spend is necessary, then I wouldn't take it away. And then I wouldn't worry so much about it, you know? You just can get faster with that. Mm. Mike wrote, that's why I think YouTube streaming, selling a course or whatever works really well within this creative industry. It costs tons of extra work, but if you get it figured out, you can get a semi passive, passive side hustle gone. Yeah, that's true. That's really an advantage of this industry. But I would also say there's also just um, a lot of trend content. Also, when I, to be honest, when I look at my first YouTube video, which is almost two years ago, I think it's uh, the how to do value studies. When I look at that video, it has a lot of views, but it doesn't perform that well because it's not so informative. And then if I would do that video now, I would make it completely different. Um, but yeah, that's the perception also change and also like what people want in terms of information. Um, that's also completely different. And back to your point in terms of selling, there is also the trend that people just record doing their work and then they sell it as a tutorial, which yeah, I mean, it's, it can be very subjective on, on judging how informative something is. Because like what is maybe not informative for me or for you can be informative for somebody else. So um, yeah, but definitely it's a good point. Absolutely. Hey, Celine, how's it going? We were all waiting for you. This, this, this here is all for you. You missed everything, Celine. You're too late. No, it's all good. We just continued on study and uh, we will continue with the study maybe 15, 20 minutes more. And then we start with the uh, with our own image and applying all that knowledge, all the juicy part, all the juicy informations. By the way, um, for all of you who are on Twitch, uh, we have now a VIP, a VIP function. I don't know. How's it, what it does, Twitch just notified me that we have a VIP function now. I have to double check if I will, if I can give people VIP status or if you, if you peeps can take the VIP status, I don't know, I have to check it out, but we achieved that while all streaming. Hey, Alnua, how's it going? How's life going? You were cook, you were cooking dinner. What, what did you, what did you cook, Celine?
You're still on your lineup for brainstorm. Oh, oh, oh. Is it is it a good thing, Selena, or is it a bad thing? <laughs> You're welcome, Aluna. How's life going? Hey, Nata. Uh, oh, from Venice Beach? Nice. How's the weather? I guess sunny as always. Uh, my thoughts on digital versus traditional art? Um, um, hmm. In terms of what is better, what is more convenient, or um, just in general? I would say digital is something which we can't take away anymore because because just of our our industry and of all the fast pace of production. Um, but traditional art is something we should never completely forget because it's our foundation, it's the joy of painting, it's the joy of being outside and paint life and having the the having the direct contact with paint and drawings and the flies you have to fight while you're standing at the lake and you try to paint something hey hey sin uh, se patos palos wow what a name uh, welcome to the stream and thanks for the youtube follow yeah, but yeah, uh, back to the point. Tra traditional art is, um, yeah, it's 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 the foundation of of everything. So um, I would never completely stop drawing or drawing a sketchbook, um, painting. I mean, painting technically, um, it's just more convenient if you sit all day uh, in front of your uh, PC and you paint for work to just open a new file instead of building everything up. But there's nothing better than sketching in a sketchbook in the in the subway or in the train sitting in a coffee shop drawing people just the feeling of traditional there's nothing better i would say it's really the foundation of everything what are your thoughts on that hinata Tell us how you manage between full-time job and side work creating content. Oof. I can't. It's my secret. <laughs> um, to be honest, to be honest, I don't. I don't know. A friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, once described me as a person who just gets shit done. And I think um, I don't know. Uh, it's. Um, it's it's a very big topic also um and it's funny that you asked that because it's also something which continuously goes um through my head to not overwork because i really have the problem of not taking too many breaks um and i just enjoy my work i just enjoy painting and drawing communicating with people having a chat about that so my manage my management process is really try to get everything done in my work time when it comes to my studio job. So I set myself milestones and goals. So if I have a certain deadline, I want to get all my sketches done to a certain point. Then I want to get all my 3D done. I want to get all the painting done. So I basically have certain milestones. Um, and these milestones are set over a longer period. So I'm not forced to do any crunch crunching. So not to do any overwork. But you, that's, I mean, that's never, never um, easy to do, I would say, um, because it still can happen. You never know who's coming to you and saying, okay, we need this and this and that. Um, hey, Katsube, welcome to the stream. Thanks for the follow. Um, but um, yeah, I, I just try to really do my work in the, in the amount of time I'm, I'm setting myself for work. And when it comes to personal stuff, um, I always do a warm-up study, warm-up sketch in the morning. And 
I schedule my week like like what I do now for certain weeks is basically from Monday to Friday from Monday to Friday after work I always spend at least four or three more hours on content creation for YouTube or um, if it's streaming or anything so I would say I have at least a 12 to 14 hour workday every day um, and on the weekend it is tricky because I now try to stop to work too much on the weekend because I also have mentees and I also have uh, different content I need to need to get done I also have some freelance jobs so um, I have a lot of on my schedule and just try to plan as much ahead and really to hit my times you know my timestamps and I sometimes I work six days a week sometimes last week I worked seven days a week which was kind of draining but yeah on the other side I just got a lot of stuff done so um, yeah I don't know it's it's really hard to talk about I would say because it's also depends on the situation in your life you know um, I'm just I just have the luxury right now to that I don't have any kids or something so I'm um, basically really have the possibility to to spend a lot of time just yeah on, on like building my career I, I want to say yeah I don't know if that uh, if that gives you any information which is helpful for you Aluna how's it for you uh, Celine wrote um, I, <laughs> I don't know if it's good or bad <laughs> um, but I'm almost done and ready to move on to doing new thumbnails that's awesome Hinata wrote, I always love digital art. I just want to be recognized in, say, galleries, because it's still kind of not recognized. People would buy tons of money on traditional art over digital. Yeah, that's true. And I, I think the appreciation for traditional art is also bigger in general, um, because it's it people know what it means to create a traditional piece. I think that's also why, for example, traditional um traditional work on instagram for example gets also more appreciated gets more likes and stuff so um yeah um but i think if your goal is to get recognized i would not try to think about which medium you should use you should use the medium you have the most fun with because you if you're really ambitious and work a lot on yourself you will come to the point that you will get recognized and then like imagine you do something which you don't like let's say you do digital but you hate digital and you want to do traditional i mean at the end the switch also is maybe not so hard but let's say you have a contract where you produce a certain amount of digital pieces every month every year for your gallerist and then you don't want to do any digital anymore so i wouldn't approach it like that hey Matthew, greetings how's it going um, Anua just started a full-time job. Nice, congrats. Um, then a month and it felt like three months. I forgot about everything. I'm enjoying it. However, I don't want to be away from my own time creating content. I totally understand it. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know how you are used to work full-time. Um, just from my experience, it. It is you will get used to it you know because the the work will become easier for you if you do it more and more and more um, so you eventually get more time on the end and you will be less exhausted on my first couple of jobs i did nothing after work i was just so dead um, but if you do it for years i think i'm now in my when did i when i just, i went out of college in 2018 so three years ago and in 2018 i also started to work officially as a as yeah as an i i entered the industry basically and i would say in the in the next year so 2019 i mostly sp i would say the half of the year i spent only on my studio job um just focusing on a studio job learning everything getting better and then i got used to get more used to to the job itself and then i could focus again on my personal stuff so don't be worried about um 
just keep all your ideas and everything in the back of your mind and don't kill yourself over it because you don't get the energy back, you know. Thanks, Katsube. Um... Thoughts on art school. I have graduated with a bachelor in visual art and yes, it helps, but I say it's not necessary. Yeah, um, it's. I have the same opinion as you just mentioned it. It helps, but it's not necessary. If you want to, if you want to get a work visa in certain countries, it helps to have a diploma, but it's not necessary. It really depends on what state state in your life you are. I would always say like my studying, I studied industrial design and what I studied just gave me more time to grow. I also learned certain things in, in my studies, but it at the end, it just gave me more time to grow, which I needed to get better. So yeah, also like it depends really on where you are. And if you say you're from Venice, you probably paid a lot of money for your school. It, if you, if I tell you what we pay here in Berlin, it's really hilarious if you compare it. Um. Damn, it's a mystery how you maintain this energy level. <laughs> it's impressive. <laughs> uh, I I don't know if it's if it's that good to be honest. I don't know if it's that healthy. Also, also I can't go in in, in the gym. I lost like five kilos. I like I feel like I lost five kilos in the upper body and gained five kilos in the lower body just by sitting all day. No, but uh, I think it's really about balance. Um, I also need to say. Um, like since I've made the brainstorm vlog, I uh, realized that I have more capacities. It was l really a training on. Uh, it was really a training on, on on energy. I realized okay, I can easily make a hundred hundred hour work week, which is maybe not um, easy to maintain over a long period, but it's possible. And I just try to stretch everything over more weeks. Also again, I don't have any kids and everything, so one day I want to have kids, so I want when I have kids I want to spend the time with them. I don't want to focus on building something, you know. So I need to build something now. That conception also gives me a lot of energy. I always need to spend at least one day a week without touching Photoshop or 3D. If I work on stuff without any real day breaks, I always feel so burned out later. Mike, I I was the same. I r completely was the same um, in the beginning. It is just if you do it, if you if you do it as a full time job, like on a daily job, you will come to the point that you get so used to it that you don't like that it's it's really like i don't know if you compare it to um to to anime manga where the where the main actor or the main protagonist is training so much that his capacities rise up you know like i don't know some goku going into a time chamber and training it's really it's really like that you get so used to it you get so much more capacities and you also get faster with your work. So you, you learn much more and you understand things and things you would take maybe two, three hours for in the past, you easily do in 30 minutes. So, um, yeah. All right, what's the time? Half past eight. Um, I would say we just spend a couple more minutes on just pushing that a bit and then we 
should move on to the hardest part for today, which is creating our own image. Because I haven't had any time to prepare a sketch or something. So we also need to make a sketch and that requires a little bit of thinking. And I hope I will not fail <laughs> today. <laughs> um, but I think we can do it. We stay positive. And also before we move over, we also need to do something very important, which is writing down the, the things we learned in our study here. Hey Zoe, welcome to the Twitch stream and thanks for the Twitch follow. I hope you're doing well. All right. What are you all doing? Are you painting, chilling? Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. How about taking care of your health mentally and physically with your busy schedule? Um, Don't do, yeah, mental health. <laughs> it's maybe not my best topic. <laughs> I'm laughing, but internally I'm crying. No, um, that's a good question. Um, I think it's really all about balance. Um, again, I, I usually go to the gym three to four times in a week because I just need the, I just need the, um, the, the movement. And of course, at the moment, everything is closed, so um, that's kind of kind of hard. Um, that's, but I would say like going to the gym is for me definitely something which helps me in terms of de-stress and losing all. I don't know if I ever have negative thoughts because I I'm a very positive person, but um, it does just like going to the gym and working out really helps me a lot. Um, just to have a certain balance. I also read a lot of books when I, the, oh, I, I mean, that would be a lie if I say a lot because in a moment I don't read too much. I always buy books and then I only read when I go in bed, but the last couple of weeks I go so late in bed because I work so much um, that I always fell asleep. But usually I would also read books on certain topics. Thanks for the Twitch follow, Aluna. Um, yeah, certain things. Um, for example, at the moment I read uh, 12 Rules of Life by Jordan B. Peterson. Um, it's a bit far away to grab it right now, but it's a very interesting book. I know a lot of people don't like Jordan um, J.B. Peterson because of his, um, yeah, about the things he say. And um, but I was very curious just about the information he's giving in his book because some people also said good things about the approach of like um, of the approach of life he has or the, the, the knowledge he gave. But I couldn't progress very far with the book, to be honest. So I just started with it. Yeah, and then I think also people in my life help me for balance, you know, like the people who are important for me, family and everyone else. I think they are a big part of like keeping me mentally healthy. You know? If you maybe can guess from the streams, um, I'm someone who talks a lot. So um, I have a lot of conversation with family, friends and about every topic. Like I think that really keeps me also mentally fit. How about you, Aluna? I used to work as a freelancer for so long. Um, ah, you worked so, lo so long as a freelancer, but now you're in a studio. But also, Aluna, when I'm the first time when I went into a studio, like for a full time job on a contract, um, I felt I have my weekend back. You know, I don't know how's it for you, but when I freelanced, I never had the feeling of me having a weekend. And when I went into the studio on Friday, like work was done and I couldn't, I couldn't, I could focus on myself. That's really a benefit. 2018 was the year I gradu graduated from high school. <laughs> I always forget how young you are, Celine. 
Major, I'm fine, thanks. Finally started new study in uh, game art and animation. Been learning how 3D model, going to learn 3D animation next. I'm enjoying the time. Only I don't find motivation to draw. Yeah, I mean, you can't learn everything at the same time. Just focus on what do you do right now. This is what I want to try to improve myself for the sake of work at the same time for my own sake, since it's my specialty. I understand, Aluna. Just, uh, just don't don't stress yourself too much with it. You know, I I totally understand it. Um, and it's like the ambitions and the work ethic you have is really good, and it's nothing bad about it. But, just, yeah, I I also understand the point of you've been working on work for somebody else and you can't do your own stuff just just accept it for now because the time will come and just take it as a how do they say you know when before it turns into a butterfly they go into a certain um, in a certain mode uh, i don't know the english word but i think you get the point you basically just it's like a, an incarnation i think it's the word you go into that incarnation mode and then you wait until you have the time to uh, to go back and work on your ideas um, to be fair i could just do all my education with brainstorm and through online education but man it gets lonely here doing all my own yeah, Celine, I totally get that. I totally understand that. And that's also a benefit of, of a system, of an art school. Um, Hinata Road. I live in the USA and damn, and damn, the school debt is one of all time high here. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's really ridiculous. And it's so stupid because it's education, man. Education should be more even more available i mean we have youtube we have the internet but still like i don't know they don't teach you to cure any sort of certain like diseases they teach you how to draw and design and paint even though it's a valuable skill i don't want to talk it down but the amount of money they they want from you in the states is just crazy Damn, yes, um, tuition fees are ridiculous in the US. I agree. Um, I live in LA, which is pretty much crumbling pre pandemic cost of living wildfire. People are going out of state. Oh, yeah, I heard that. I totally understand. Um, which area of uh, are you living? You said from Venice, right? Because I also lived in Venice for six months. Um, which, which area? If I could have nine tails chakra, it would be easier. <laughs> you, you, Mike, you did like my Son Goku analogy. Really? You like Naruto even more. Okay. So you get nine tails chakra. Um, COVID especially is making students question more whether the student debt for our college US is worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Also, you see how the online how the online ed education is working and that it's actually functioning, you know? So it's a, it's a, it's a very good question to consider. <clears throat> Honestly, even in Europe, it makes us wonder if even going to the university is worth it. It's mostly very cheap, absolutely. Hey, hey, Zoe. I'm lucky I got a scholarship and a trust fund helped me to get out of that burden. Wow. That's awesome, Hinata. Had, did you have to apply for the uh, scholarship? Just watching, long day. All right. Yeah, same here. 
do, do, do you have a full day of work behind you, I guess? So just relax. Enjoy the music. Um, how long do you think are you going to work today? Um, you mean you mean how long the stream will go? Or how long I work today in terms of hours because we talked about it. So I think the stream will go until, I don't know, 11 maybe. And we need to we need to move on yet now. Um, I, I would love to spend more time on adding more the all of the foliage detail and all the little light here in the image, um, which we can do. Um, but that doesn't serve the purpose. And I also promised uh, on the last stream that I'm gonna show how to move on with this study. So we will do that now. Um, but in terms of work, I started working to this today, 8:30 in the morning. So. Um, I started at 8.30 and I took a break about 30 to 45 minutes. So it will be a 14, 15 hour day today, I guess, if that was your question. You miss the gym, especially the sauna. Yeah, I'm not a sauna type of person, but I, I miss the gym so much. I even dream about the gym, okay? I dream how I lift weights. Yo, bro, if you have time, watch Andrew Haberman's podcast. A lot of good stuff for improving your life. It's a neurological, neurology, oh, what a word, neurology podcast mainly. Okay, I will write it down. Thanks, Lucas. Yes, I'd love to go to the gym again. You probably could get the same information in any other self-help book. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, you see, Aluna, it's, it's it's the weekend. It's it's such a weird thing. Um, you don't need to read Jordan Peterson for that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was just curious, to be honest. I don't know. And also, like when people say like a guy is likable or not likable, I always like to make an image for myself. I haven't been able to draw for the past two to three months. Corona hit me hard. Ooh, I'm sorry to hear that, Zoe. Um, didn't you go to school in Berlin too? Games Academy? Are you asking me, Zoe? No, I went to, I, yes, I went to, to university in Berlin, but it's the University of Applied Sci Science and I studied industrial design there, not Games Academy. Santa Monica, can you lift me? <laughs> I wait. <laughs> oh, easy. With one arm, Hinata. You're very light. Easy. I, I used to. I, I would say I, I'm even more than the double of you. Did you study at the Games Academy, Zoe? I've never been to the gym. I gotta say, since I quit playing soccer a couple years ago, I have been become lazy when it comes to sport. I gotta work out again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's also like it's it's COVID. It's just a city a shitty time. It's just yeah, I don't know. Yeah, nothing you can do about that. Uh, yeah, as well, a Vancouver Film School in Canada. Oh, nice. That's nice. Yeah, for me it was too, for me it was really tricky because I we we built a lot of shit in, in school like in industrial design we had to go to the workshop and build stuff with our hands. And I always wanted to draw all day, so that was kind of annoying. All right, <laughs> lovely people. Um, let's continue with our um, with that. Um, um, <laughs> all right um i have to focus here now okay <laughs> um all right um the now we have to we have to now we push the study to a certain point um we obviously could paint even more it's it's not it's not 100 percent there if i zoom out it reads like the lightest reading 
um, there are certain things which we can still work on which is all that all that information here and everything here um, I think the most part here we captured which is this um, light coming around the the bushes and also a little bit of light here on the tree and everything so um, <clears throat> it's it's uh, I mean we could spend for example I could spend hours and hours just losing myself into painting but that's really not the purpose here but in order to um, to to go where I wanted to end the stream today um, later on it, which is basically applying all the knowledge everything we just learned to our own painting we now need to um, make the next step and before we do that um, which I would advise for anyone who's trying out the method of um, studying is writing just the stuff down you just observed. So, <clears throat> so for example, what could that be? Um, that could be um, light shapes. So you could sketch out the shape. You could even make a sketch of the shape. You could um, write down triangle light shapes. It really doesn't matter. Like it's just important that you understand um, what is it that you want to. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, that you understand what is that you want to remember. The same goes for um, warm light. I mean, we have this here already, but I just write it again. Cool shadow. Then um, we can also write down white highlights. So basically all this little white nuances we have on the light part. Then, um, which is really important and what we were actually looking for is um, this magic feel yeah. magic feel um, equals oh god how do you write dappled light i i really don't know dab is it dappled light ah damn i have to google that um, dappled light, dappled light, yes, all right. Dappled light. So um, I'm talking about the light shapes we created on the ground, which is basically coming through all the upper, um, all the, the leaves and everything, you know? Um, then we could also write down the like how we indicate certain things like the foliage for example um, what do we ob observe in terms of um, type of foliage this for example this looks very interesting like how how do we paint that so um, here we just did like those basic strokes which could be stuff like so you could technically also like do a small sketch certain types of strokes you could make you could even write down what brushes you're using it really is important here that you um, that you write down everything you observe Um, what else could we take? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't write m even more down. It's, it's that's that's totally fine for me. But write down whatever you want. Okay, write really all the things down you think which are important. So um, you have two options now. Um, first, we can take the sketch. We we're doing in the beginning. Um, oh, do I have to sketch here? Yeah, the ugly sketch. We can take the sketch here again, 
put the reference image away and paint it again. But um, which I would recommend and advise for every beginner because this really is the fastest way to learn painting, to learn light and shadow and to just have that. That's really the point where you have the biggest um, learning curve. Because um, what we will do now, we will do a sketch now um, for our own image and then apply that. But if you're a beginner, you maybe have trouble on coming up with your own sketch, your own idea. And it is better if you really focus on one thing rather than um, more things in uh, at the same time in the beginning. You know, if you now really also need to focus on creating an image with perspective, composition, story, etc. And then all the study knowledge, everything on top that can be a bit hard in the beginning. So I would really focus on that. All right. So let's take that away. Let's keep the notes. Okay, um, so for our image now, um, obviously I want to add a little bit of story. Let me take a shot. It's pretty cold in here. It's kind of cold in my room. <clears throat> so, um, okay, yeah, the only thing I prepared is basically the format for the sketch. And also a perspective. I just uh, made a perspective grid, but um, I'm not sure if I will use it because I was first do the sketch and then see um, how much we need that. Uh, dun, dun, dun. So we have our notes here. And now we, of course, before we start the sketch, we um, have to think about uh, what do we want to have in the sketch. Of course, this, um, this here, this this demo and also this approach is for you guys. It's for showing how I would approach studying on a certain project. This is of course not the end result of our project. We want to design also a, a city, which we also talked in the previous episodes about. Um, so this is really the purpose of um, a, a applying that knowledge from the study here. But we've done already um, some studies on the uh, middle age architecture. Um, on all those farmhouses and I also have some reference laying around here so what we could technically do is rethinking the Asian forest we just um, the Asian forest reference we just studied and now adding maybe maybe a certain um, element to that so we create a little bit of story so it's not like a blank forest again um, do you have any questions before I start about that but ev was everything clear? <laughs> when English spelling and pronunciation makes no sense. Yeah, I agree. I studied a painting today from... from a landscape in sunset and that painter actually painted the white in the sun in a blue tone to really make the sun stand out from the warm colors. Interesting. Um, are you gonna watch Zack Snyder's Justice League? Ooh, I don't really know. Because the first the first Justice League, um, we, I don't wanna talk about that. Uh, that was very, very disappointing. There was so much disappointment, so much disappointment. And yeah, I think like everything was so disappointing. Even Aquaman, oh, Aquaman was the worst. To be honest, I, to, I need to tell you guys, 
something. I I bought Aquaman on Amazon to watch it. Um, and then I watched it and it was so bad that I rather went into my kitchen washing dishes and became my own Aquaman in, rather than watching that movie to the end because it was so uninteresting. Storytelling was really so flat. I don't know. I mean, a couple of designs were pretty cool, but oh, the rest was really bad. It was just so bad. Um... Where do you guys chat talk? Are you in Discord? Cause asking question. Um, probably on the art community. Uh, um, or I think what you mean is um, the YouTube, the YouTube chat because it's a, a, a multi-stream. So we stream on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch for now. So um, they are probably also um, writing it on YouTube. But I can see I can see both. So and I'm reading it anyway. So um, just in case. But if you want to join their chat, it's also on YouTube. But we also have a Discord. It's an art community. Uh, feel free to join. So if you want, I have a, a Discord button on the YouTube banner, or also I think on, on Twitch. Um, was everything clear about the next step, um, Celine? For the for the for the um, progression here. Okay, cool. Thanks, Zoe. <laughs> At least you got me. <laughs> All right, let's go on. <clears throat> So what I could imagine maybe maybe some sort of um, some sort of entrance. Because we will have a lot of overgrowth and foliage and everything, so maybe it's an old city or something. Figure for scale. So in our study, we had a light situation where the light came diagonally from the right. So let's say it comes from here and it came through from behind like behind the 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 edge we had on the study so let's say there is light coming here and maybe it hits a certain part of um, the gate or something maybe something like that
so maybe he is already a part of now I'm just looking at my reference from the from the different type of um, architecture here we have and usually I would really spend most of the time on my sketch to clarify the image as much as I can just to make sure that I don't have any questions which I will need to answer in the painting. I mean of course here it is a demo but at least I want to have a nice result at the end for you also. So maybe there's also a little bit of Streets in the back can be smaller. What I really like is are those shapes here, the shapes of the of the, the roofing. So maybe we can make something like that. Just add a certain design. Flip that boy. So we can also start to think about where's the foliage. And do we have trees? Also we had this nice tree in the back, so maybe thinking about thinking about the tree we had. Maybe making that a part of the making a part of the structure, maybe making it here. So it can be a huge huge tree. But what is more important is really thinking about the the, the light shapes, the shadow shapes because that's what we will communicate and what we want to communicate. So maybe we have also some houses here in the back. Maybe in a little bit elevated. Don't get confused by all the black dots in here. It's just an indication for me. an old broken gate maybe the like part of the door is also gone I don't have really a, a reference for a gate here but I think that really doesn't matter I think we can take that away from the references we have like here is just I mean we are a little bit under time pressure of course but um, Still, proportion and everything is, um, yeah, when you sketch out, it's very easy to lose the sense for proportion. That's why 3D is so good. So, yeah. Also, I want to have a little bit of a different design, not to copy it one on one. It's kind of boring. Just put the 
prism back in just for scaling. So what we also had, we had this um, this foreground bush we had. So maybe adding that here. And we also need to think, okay, where's the light coming through? Is the light coming through here? Um, is it coming through between the gate and the house? Um, or is the house creating a, a cast shadow? And where can we add the dappled light? And I would like to add the dappled light in the foreground definitely and also diagonally. So it's a bit more interesting. So that would mean that we have, yeah, that we have a lot of um, stuff here that's going through. Also interesting this overlap they have on the architecture <coughs> and I don't know when you've um, if you haven't been a part of the last stream so um, in the middle age it was to a certain part it was forbidden to add things on top because um, how it started people build built their houses on a um, stone foundation but stone was very expensive so they started to add living room on top. So they had um, their shops where they sell um, sell their crafts and stuff. Um, they had that on the lower area and on the upper area was mainly for living. That's why you have a lot of houses with the stone foundation and wood on top. Um, but yeah, and uh, like then they um, started to forbid that because uh, people were building houses so close to each other that the potential, um, the potential spreading of fire was so big and they wanted to avoid it that, so um, yeah. How's the chat going? Um, when you rather do the dishes, you know something is really shit. Yep. Um, just finished watching Snyder Cut, and I'm going to tell you: do not watch it. Batman and Lewis had a had a baby. Then Batman died at the end, and Superman and Lewis took care of the baby. What? Did you just spoil the movie? Are you serious? <laughs> I mean, okay, now I really don't have to watch it. <laughs> um, do I prefer drawing characters or backgrounds? Hmm. Good question. In the moment, I pr prefer to draw backgrounds. But it, that's also because I did a lot of portraits the last year and I tried to step up my character game. But yeah, um, I tried to step it up and I, I did a lot of stuff to, to get better with them. If it was successful or not, I don't know, but in the moment I just enjoy doing environments more. But also, like um, in the moment, I'm more interested in uh, 
in design in general because I did this form language class at Brainstorm and I learned so much interesting approaches on design which I still want to practice. So yeah. In a moment it's just environments. How's it for you Zoe? So um, let me think back of the thing we studied. Um, we had a lot of, we had a huge foliage bush in the midground. So maybe let's do that here in the foreground. Then we can also add this bush we had in, in the foreground. So we almost, um, doing the same maybe we can add more of these little bushes just to communicate depth and perspective maybe they come out of the ground maybe the ground is a bit shattered also um, we need to do a lot so the light is coming here so in the reference image we had this nice walkway going around maybe we can do the same here just need to be careful with the perspective i mean i'm too lazy to do perspective grid now just i just eyeball it so maybe we have a tree going up here in the back like we had on the study image So we see the gate from below. Also like freestyling here, everything a little bit, but I don't know. I think we can compensate it. So maybe like this. smaller so we have a sense of scale in the back um, we can add also chimney 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 here maybe also here chimney gets the same shape as the gate so we have a little bit of a recoming shape in there good so here will be a lot of foliage 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 mm, wanna maybe do we want a tree no we just want foliage so everything is overgrown here also this reference pretty nice here with the foliage on the house so we can add that as well so it's basically a little bit of hanging and i'm just here indicating stuff for myself just that i remember it it's also kind of nice having a little bit of foliage here like on the edge the, uh, i mean on the corner let's do a little bit for the roof make sure the structure is not too wonky because I'm really eyeballing here everything right now just to save time and you will see like my sketches look very dirty <laughs> but um, it's also like because of the lack of time we have alrighty so we have a tree maybe here maybe we have another house in the back which also resembles the shape we already used. Maybe it's like here, boom, boom, boom. Making sure the design fits. Um, a 
think maybe we can scale up the house a bit. Looks a bit small. Making the lines a little bit converging more, so it's more clear that we look from below. Okay, let me flip that. I think we can move it a bit more. So we need to add a little bit more stuff here. What could be cool is if that part here in the foreground is in shadow. Let's say that that part here is in shadow. So it's it's basically just ground part, just sand. And then as we said, as we wanted to make it, the light is coming through behind that building. And we have a lot of foliage here. So the foliage is partially covering part of the building. So we save a lot of energy because we don't have to solve so much problems here. Then we also add foliage on the building itself to make, okay, it's an, I don't, I don't know, lost city, it's overgrown, etc., etc. And then, so let's say the light is coming from behind that part, that area. So let's say the light is coming through, so we could have a really nice light shape on the ground here. So let's make it, give it an L. So this here, boom, 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 is all receiving light. Then we have the foliage here, which could be the reason of dappled light as we study it. <coughs> Sorry, and then we also have, um, let me just quickly give that here, just a couple, oh, maybe it's open, maybe it's open and broken, that could be interesting, just to have a little bit of story part, maybe there's a hole in the ceiling, maybe they got attacked in the past or something. And yeah, and that part here of the house is in shadow. So it's like that, it's like that, they yeah, are like this. So then we have this gate, maybe the gate is broken, maybe it's not perfectly angled anymore. And it's also here, it's, it's, it has a hole inside, so. Yeah, and then we have here, now we just have to communicate that. And the light is coming through. Then we have a big cast shadow from the from the house. So this area here could be all in shadow. Oops, that's the wrong angle. So when the light is coming from the left side, so it's coming like this. So this part here will be lit, which could be also really nice. So we can add a lot of detail here. I wonder if that would make sense. Stuff like this. I don't know, it doesn't make sense for a gate, I think. Okay, let's leave that out. We just need to make sure that the forms are solid enough. So and then we also have light here, like partially hitting the hitting the gate. So everything here is in shadow, and we could think of if there's basically light coming through in between the gate and the house so we still have another light shape here and then what we could do we could add really like maybe a person I, th I saw it on so many concepts it's really the easiest trick just adding maybe a silhouette of a person or something just here which maybe gets a little bit light from this little part here and which is automatically silhouetted so that would mean that the back like the back of the house here get also light which creates contrast so we have automatically story um, and then we just need to refine a little bit more the background just the time half past nine okay then we roughly have like well, i don't know how far we can go but roughly one and a half hours maybe two hours to block in 
to block in um, colors and stuff. Um, but this is just how I would go on really brainstorming a piece. I mean, obviously we did a couple architecture studies in the last episodes. If you guys haven't seen it, um, feel free to check them out as well. But also, um, yeah, so that how, that's how I would approach it. If I don't would have a big idea, um, I would just write down three keywords for what I would do, what I want to study. But we, you also should have that because you studied already an image. So um, that otherwise wouldn't make much of sense. And then it's really, um, when we do that, it's really just the application of our study, which is so much fun because you basically created like just some stuff out of your imagination. Maybe here's also some sort of like, I don't want to say gate because they had those, like those walkways here. Also the reference are mixed um, in terms of some of them are from France and some of them are from the UK. And they had also uh, su subtle differences in the way they built the houses, but that doesn't matter for now. Um, let me think, what can we add? So yeah, um, really I would just spend the most time I can on the sketch. Because the more interesting the sketch is, the, the, the better is the end result. <clears throat> do you guys have any questions? Guys and girls, do you have any questions? For that, ah, the last question. Oh, sorry, the last question was: Do you prefer drawing characters or backgrounds? Um, Hinata said it was crazy. Yeah, thanks, Hinata, for spoiling. No, it's it's okay. I'm not mad. Before I stopped drawing a while ago, I started working on my same face syndrome. I totally know what you mean. But sometimes we need to get those faces out. I enjoy both a lot. Depends on my mood. Celine loves backgrounds. She haven't drawn characters in ages. Yeah, and you, you technically you don't need to if you want to be an environment artist. <laughs> um, I guess I'm drawing some now, but they're not designs. More so to add some story to my environment. Yeah. The, the, that's also an, a good skill. It's also good to learn characters, like or how how to learn at least to add a certain shape of a character to an environment, just to s tell more story. Hannah, I always felt overwhelmed when trying to draw and paint environments. This is why I always prefer characters, but I'm focusing in environments now. Nice. I want to see them, Hannah. Post them. Post them on the art community. Noah Bradley has a great video on that, on fundamentals. Um, Hinata, I'm going to get a hibiscus tea and Taco Bell while watching you draw. Do you, I, want ta I want Taco Bell. Can you, can you please um, bring me some Taco Bell as well? That would be awesome. And you know, Hinata, since we, since I, I was in LA, I never had such a great Mexican food. I mean, obviously, but in Europe, it's just, yeah, it's, you can't compare it. Um, Hannah, yes, I'm studying fundamentals. I noticed that was my problem, you know, mostly perspective and organizing my values. I'm going to check Noah's video. Thank you. Zoe, are you using the image from before the first thing for this one? Yes, I do. So I basically, I, ba we basically we basically did the study, the study of the forest and the, the painting information we saved or we tried to save on the study, we will try to apply here. That's the part of the demo, basically. Um, how do you practice perspective? Just constant reference study? Um, 
I practice perspective to a certain warm up, which I do still to that day, sometimes or sometimes not, but it's basically drawing boxes, cylinders, and spheres, and then drawing more complex forms um, as a warm up, like 30 minutes. Like just simple boxes, you know, in perspective, but filling a full page with it. And then maybe doing a composition out of boxes. And then going into more complex shapes, like combining certain things maybe it's a little bit like 3d modeling but also i would say like i learned a lot about perspective while i was 3d modeling so i can recommend that and also um yeah just drawing a lot you know trying always thinking in forms that really helps but perspective can be also a nuts hell so um on sometimes if i don't focus some, you know, like sometimes you lose yourself, um, you, your head is there, but you're working on the other side. And then I'm also like completely forget about my perspective and then the image looks flat. That can happen to everyone, I think. I hope that answers your question. What? <coughs> there is a great Mexican food in Berlin. Yeah, it is not that bad. Um, for example, burrito window has very good burritos and quesadillas but you can't compare it to Mexican food. After this pandemic, you should come over and maybe we could dine out. Yes, totally. Let's do it. Um, do you draw on Cintiq or a normal tablet? I draw on a Wacom Intuos, uh, the normal Wacom tablet. I don't like the position you have on a Cintiq. I just tried a Cintiq um, from my artist colleagues, um, but I really prefer like this also. I don't know, I just love using shortcuts on my tablet and I'm also a gamer guy. So I like like using shortcuts, um, W, ASD and stuff, you know, so. Um, and that's also how I learned it, so. And also I see my colleagues sitting in front of the Cintiq in a weird angled position, having the arm up and having the key keyboard under the Cintiq. That's just, that just gives me pain watching. What are you using, Zoe? Okay, let's push that a bit and then. We need to make the roof part a bit bigger. It looks a bit small on scale. Okay, let me flip that one more time. Mm. The sketch is very low in detail. But technically I think I can make it work. I would love to think a little bit more about story at this point, but um, I would um, prefer really to get the demo part going. So let's say it's really an, an old city in an Asian forest, so we have a lot of overgrowth and stuff, so maybe it's a forgotten city, I don't know. Dun, dun, dun. Let me just quickly do that. I mean, at the end, we technically, if we run out of time, we can also use a little bit of the photos just to bash them in for informations, just for the side panels of the houses and stuff. But first we, of course, will paint everything. Um, but just in case we run out of time, we can just photo bash a little bit of, like just the architectural info, info in, just to save that. Like that. Maybe adding a window, I don't know. Could be nice. 
Let's roll the dice. Okay, maybe the other window's broken. Just stay to our story. So here is foliage and before. Overgrow, overgrow, overgrow. Maybe they have a certain entrance here. Like we studied on the last last part. So maybe they built Maybe they build like a certain extra sh stuff here for the living area. Does that work now? Oh no, let's try just add, adding a double roof here. That maybe could be cool. Just like that. some birds just selling a little bit of concept arty look we need some birds I'll make sure the walkway is clear enough all right so basically we have two 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 selling points, three selling points, like this house here, person standing here, and maybe also the gate. I'm just thinking of what cool thing we could add here. Any one of you played Skyrim? I'm a huge Skyrim fan. And I wonder why I've never done any fantasy work. I always wanted to do fantasy. And I just love the the setting and everything in Skyrim. So don't. maybe this is also Oh no, I don't want to add a roof here because we said we want to have the light coming through. But here can be more foliage. And here bushes, bushes, bushes. All right, all right, all right. Okay. It looks maybe a little bit messy, but I think I can work with it. What do you peeps think? Should we proceed to the painting part? Or should I spend more time on the drawing part? Experienced the California dreaming life, which is long gone. Yeah, I mean, you know, there is definitely a certain magic Venice had when I was there. Like, just I don't know that you don't have a weather because there's always sun and a certain vibe, a certain mood when you ride through the through the streets and stuff, and you go for food and I don't know. I was jogging at Venice Beach and everything, so that was kind of cool. But I don't know everything else. I don't know if it, if I could imagine living there. Um, thank you so much for your videos and answering questions. The value videos helped me a lot. Oh, that's nice to hear. Uh, it's really nice to hear because they almost two years old, and I. Uh, I don't know, every time I see them, I'm like, damn, I should do an updated version on that. I would do the video completely different. 
By the way, everyone who just joined on Twitch, uh, welcome to the stream. Um, just just say hi in, on the chat. And also we multi-streaming, so don't get confused. We have people also on YouTube. Uh, I think we have 17 viewers right now. And we're also streaming on Facebook, but I don't know who's uh, watching on Facebook. Um, dun dun dun, let me read. I started with a normal tablet and switched to Cintiq a while ago. Got myself a great big one about two years ago during a bigger art project at the end of December. It took three years. Wow, okay. And how is it about your posture? Ah, you wrote that. Posture is bad in all drawing situations. Doesn't matter the tool, <laughs> traditional digital. I mean, it really depends because I need to say my posture is kind of okay sitting like here. Also, I have uh, something below my feet, so I can, if I want, put my feet up and stuff. So I can really sit 15 hours straight, <laughs> if that's healthy. But I, I totally get you. Um, I was saving up for going to Lightbot EXO one day. I've never left Europe, but well, then the pandemic happened. Yeah, Europe is nice. But I think like once you should go to the States at least. But you soon go to Canada, right? Celine? Um, do you figure out design ahead of time in the sketch or do you tackle it in a painting? I tend mm, which I tend to noodle so much in the painting stage if my sketch wasn't good enough. Yeah, that's the thing. Like as I mentioned, I would spend way more time on the design part. Um, and this here is really just like we just proceed with that. So we come to the painting part without this, before the stream is ending. This here is really about applying the study, um, the painting study on that. But usually I would spend way more time. Also, you see, there's basically not much in the sketch here. That's just very ru rudimental sketch. But I would always spend more time on that. Zoe, yeah, Skyrim, 700, uh, 700 hours of my life I never regret. <laughs> I totally get what you mean. I don't, I totally understand, Zoe. Totally. Skyrim is so good. Do you play the original version or the modded version? Celine said, let's go. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> okay, 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 okay. So now comes really the part of um, remembering our painting. We could, of, of course, take our study now, but first let's try it without a study. So we knew we have a range from here to here. So foliage and everything is pretty cool here. And then everything gets warmer and the ground was pretty red. And became warmer here and when it gets cooler it goes more into that direction so let's start with the ground maybe not that saturated maybe a bit desaturated okay So what did I set? I want this in shadow, so there will be light in the foreground. And a little bit of dabbed light. Then there comes shadow again, which is from the house. And then we have light on the ground hitting the character. Then there's shadow again and then we have light again here. So we have light hitting the character twice just to make sure that we have a nice contrast. And the light parts here are just the representation for the light now. And we, we approach it the same way we did it with the study painting. Um, next would be foliage. And on our reference we don't had um, we don't have any sky 
so we don't have any sky formation information. Um, I would try to, to do the same here. So it is more closer to the to the reference. And I would start with a more darker tone like this. So let's say this here is bush bush bush. Who are we? Ah, okay. I just need to share, make sure I don't kill the sketch. And also here, this part is also foliage, foliage, foliage. Foliage, foliage, foliage. And we can really bash that stuff in. It really doesn't matter. So green, green, green. And I really go for one tone, like one local color, one value, just to make sure not to overkill it um, in the beginning. And then we know like in the in the back uh, on the reference image, it got even cooler. So it almost goes into the blues. So it was a little bit brighter. Yeah, let's try that. So it's really massive overgrown here. Like it's a huge forest. also have this boy here we can make him even a bit darker of course we don't need to stay so close to the sketch we can just play a little bit with the shape to make it interesting But also thinking about our um, notes we wrote down. There were that's a point where the notes come very in handy. <laughs> and the good thing is, we, when we don't have when we have a lot of foliage, it can cover a lot of stuff. So um, we can hide a lot of stuff. It's just helping us. Um, Start already also doing a little bit here on the on the house part. Also, I see some. Uh, there's a lot of stuff wrong in the perspective and stuff, but we ignore that now. It's just um, we can fix that also later when we add more information. Just for the purpose of demonstration. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, next. Um, going even a bit darker. Should we do, should we do, should we do the houses? The question is what type of value should I want to go to houses? Because we haven't studied the, the houses in terms of painting, but if they have a, like one of the the white tones here. Let's just try to imagine, okay, they are in that environment. So we're talking about like a local color like here. And then there's a lot of green which get reflected a bit. So it, it just greens out a bit. Let's try that. See if that works. Oh, that's pretty bright. That could work. We put that below the foliage, yes. So it's like this, this, this. So and the rest is 
wooden, I would say. Can also change it a bit. Maybe here also. Then it gets brighter in the back. Is the music off? What is happening? Where's my music? Um, both. <laughs> um, if I get in, I'll be stoked to see more of the world, especially also to get into a new mindset. Sometimes I get a little bit tired of European one. Mm -hmm. But when the Witcher came into my life, so I had to let Skyrim go. Yeah, okay. I accept that. I joined the Discord. Maybe I share some art there. Maybe when I start to draw again. Yes, do that. Please um, feel free to ask for feedback. Also share your artwork just to motivate the other people. Um, I usually start with grayscale, but I guess with the study before it's not necessary. Yeah, it's not. It's not and I also need to save time so and also if we if we would do grayscale before um, we need to approach it a little bit different because we also did the study directly in color so we directly pick the local color and the tone but it's also not hard if you use the color wheel um, Depending on the art style though. Yeah, okay, that's true. Um, hey, Misk Boy, welcome to the stream. That's a nice local color. How do you... How do you gosh? Gosh, gosh, the co local color. What does that mean? Gosh. Uh, how do you, how do I go around? Like how do I come up with the local color? Um, I'm just uh, calculating it technically in my head. So uh, we did a study before, a painting study, um, but not of the houses. But in general, when I go about local color, I try to take something in the mid range, not too bright, not too dark, and also not too saturated. But it also depends on the style I want to achieve. All right, all right, all right. Let's move on. Um, Let's also go for, I don't know, maybe a little bit of, of darker stone here. We can dark this a bit down like this. And we do it the exact way as we did in the study before. And if you missed the first first part of the study, don't worry, the videos on the YouTube channel. You can watch it later if you want, if you like or not. Feel free, whatever you want to do. Okay, let's make the gates. Give me a bit more brown. I'm just blocking in all the stuff now. Just having a starting point. Then I'm going back to the ground. Surrounding all the light parts a bit with this gray tone because we had it also in the study. And we can also, we can always go back and look at our study or use our study, of course. But first, we really want to think about okay, what did we save? To, what did we save about that? All right, let's let me just unify everything. So <clears throat> let's let's be very lazy, okay? We are very lazy, and we just take that as a base. And I didn't even finish the houses. Let me just take that as a base. But 
let me first do the shadows. So we add a linear dodge layer and a multiply layer. And we do it the same way as we did before. So first we go for the multiply layer and we had a warm environment, which means cool shadows. So let me darken Let me darken that before the shadow. We can actually use a gradient tool just to darken that. I just want to dark this here from below because light and shadows radiating. Yep. And then we can add shadows to the to the side of the house. And also to the ground because it casts some sort of cast shadow on the ground. And we throw it to the ground. And we can also add a cast shadow here because the light is coming from here. Boom, 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 boom. And then we can also Add a cast shadow here. Oh no, that we do later. Let's do that first. And we also will have cast shadows here. Oh, wrong brush. Cast shadows here. Shadows here. Like this is in shadow, this is in shadow. Our foreground is mostly in shadow. This part here. Can we darken it? Yeah, we can darken it a bit more even. Because there's also a contact shadow of the ground and the bushes, of course. And all the foreground, we uh, we can add m way more stuff later on. Um, just let me do quickly some more cast shadows in here. So when the light is coming, it is hitting here. So we have also cast shadow here. Do that very sloppy right now, but don't worry, we fix that later. We just need to get a certain feel for the light situation, which is basically just we copy the light situation we studied. Just make sure that we have that in the base because we want to unify everything. Like in the beginning, just focus on unification and it makes the image readable. This guy also has a cast shadow. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just for the beginning, so your brain is not wandering away. In there could be even darker. Then we have this hole inside here, so inside there's no light. Can even here have some care shadows. Very simple. Also here when we have some sort of molding and everything. Okay, so now we use the linear dodge add layer. Again, same method as in the study. Take a warm color, pretty dark, pretty saturated. And what we can do, we can select our shadows. So we have the selection, now we press Control Shift I. So we invert it, so it's around. Now I press Control H, so I don't see the selection anymore. And I take a big soft round brush. Oops. Let me show my selection. Yeah, okay. And now we start to add the light.
Let me make that a bit stronger here. And it's maybe a bit of a messy approach, but I just wanted to show you just like that because it's the same way, uh, way we approach the study. And it automatically pushes the readability here. We just need to make sure that we are re really like using everything we learned in our study. So we can technically also start here with adding highlights highlights and stuff I mean, the light is a bit saturated right now we can desaturate it also a bit not to make it too strong but you get a feeling for it so think what we will do next because um, usually I would go for the big masses first always before we start painting foliage and stuff um, we will quickly use uh, the photo reference we have just to cheat and save a little bit of time um, just for the information on the houses and then we can go back on f because we haven't studied that on the painting before and then we just add a little bit of uh, texture here and then we paint that over and then we in the middle we will double check with our study to see if we are on the right direction okay. and the, the light here could be really stronger behind Hey God Artist, welcome to the stream and thanks for the Twitch follow. So what we can do here really is like also silhouetting out our house uh, selling point here. It's just for the base. And I really like to use that approach. Um, I know it looks very messy, but it's really like we did it on the study. Um, start with a local color, adding shapes and, and uh, shadows and light shapes. Just in the beginning, just to block it in, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but it gives you a certain feel for the image. So now let's use this maybe, because this looks pretty perfect for our for our story we said before. Maybe let's start with this, this looks pretty nice. So but before we do that, let's group all that. Duplicate, merge. And what I also love to do, so now we have this, everything on one layer, which just not only speeds up the process, but now that we add the reference image here, doop, the biggest part and biggest question, question I get, how do you match uh, the images to to your, uh, the reference images to your, to your background image? Super easy, super quick. Um, there's something it's on image adjustment and match color and now that we basically uh, merged all the first block in information and that's why this process is so useful on adding light and adding shadows that we that our image has certain information of light and shadow now we take the image and um, the background is called one so we just have to select the background and now you see the light at uh, the, the reference image is gets matched to the to the image we have selected. You see it takes out all the blues, makes it warmer, which is fine. It dims down also the values. So let me just safely save the PSD. And now I try subject select. To see if I'm lucky, maybe it cuts out the sky. Yeah, that works. So what I just used was subject select. Um, you just go on um, select and subject. I, I just bind it on a button. So and, and I don't want everything here, I just want 
maybe this part. we need to warp it to match our perspective and the cool thing is the structure don't has to be perfect because um, all those houses were super funky in terms of building like they didn't sometimes they didn't have any perpendicular corners or anything so <laughs> we can really go freaky and fancy on that so I just um, messed that out quickly now I paint it back in. Maybe a bit of the the roofing. need to make sure also the proportion and the scaling is working I'm getting in some values and we just do that for the houses because uh, of course we want to see how much we save from um, from the, the study we made and this doesn't have to be final here it's just we just try out stuff can change it all day because it's our image we can do what we want also be careful with the images you're using so you have to don't get any license stuff problems all right that's kind of working um, let's do the side. <laughs> you know what? Um, let's take that image again. Oh, I deleted that already. Okay, never mind. Let me add this again. What I want now is just this part here. see the texture from far it's just especially just quickly having a little bit of noise here and there oops right match color project one It's not a thing about making it accurate. It's a thing about making it feel right. The value is a bit too too bright. To darken it down. I actually don't like the color here. Okay, let's let's leave that for for later. But what we can do, we can take these informations we have and paint over them. Maybe also with the sketch. Here's the sketch. Lower the sketch a bit. So we have this info here. Also, we now start to use the lasso tool to block out silhouette on the painting. If it's an accident, there's an error that's used it, then you leave it in. <laughs> the music. 
you know, you want to film. It's like someone painting, talking to me. Now we can also push stuff below the roof. Just pushing values more. faster while streaming Photoshop says no but it's not a thing about making it accurate okay um. let's keep this this kind of cool it's about getting it to this has to be a tiny bit darker. You can also use the line tool for painting, which I really like. Just can be a bit thicker. an accident there's an error that this music is this guy talking in the music is so confusing it's like someone like talking to me it's so weird by the way how's the chat going sorry i completely zoned out for a sec um du -du -du. Let me go up. Um, Mad painting tip: When you use multiply layer, always fill the transparency background with white so it fits better. Yeah, I mean it depends, right? Um, Want to become famous? Buy followers, primes, and viewers. Nope. Thank you. Go artist. Hey, I was on your YouTube channel. I didn't know you were on Twitch, so the little follow. <laughs> Thanks. Um. Seeing your process makes me more confident that I could do it too. I think it's psych myself out with too many things all at once again. Just doing it step by step. Yes, do it step by step, Celine. This is the way. Um, just heads up the stream doesn't show your match color or window drop menu. Oh, okay. Okay, I will, I will check that after the stream. Thanks. Um, okay, I learned something. I have a very different way to use photo images. Can you repost the step by step in Discord? I couldn't follow the whole step, just did there with the photo. Really cool way. Okay, uh, yeah, can you remind me maybe tomorrow, Zoe? Because I think I, I would just forget it later on. Um, Hey, Sir Rob, welcome to the stream. Um, and hey, Sir Bob Art, and thanks for the Twitch follow. Um, what chair are you using and how long do you sit? Um, it's an IKEA chair for 100 bucks. <laughs> um, how long I sit? Too long. Uh, and um, can I sit long? My body is saying no, but I'm just doing it. Do you have a weekly workout routine? 
uh, usually when the gym is open, I go four to five times per week. And usually in the evening after work. And uh, then I also go for a run on an empty stomach in the morning. What is the time actually saying? Okay, we're three hours in. That's pretty solid, okay. Right, let's continue with that. Um, okay. Um, so what we can also do, we can just use the thing we used here. Maybe flip that, yes, that works. Let me actually clip that. So it's inside, yes. Dun, 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 dun. Photoshop. Don't be that guy. Oh, let me just quickly block in this part. Come on. Seems like Photoshop wants to go to bed. Sets too much work today, bro. Okay, let me bring back this overlap. Why is it lagging now? It didn't lag for the last three hours. Oh, this is so annoying. Okay. Um, let's. Let's, let's, let's. Like unify the back shortly. Oh, man. I'm sorry, guys. It's just lagging. So imagine it's a super, super dense forest, so there is no sky visible. <sighs> I don't know if the file became too big or what is happening. Or if it's a if it's the photos, I don't know. How's your day at work looking like? If I remember correctly, you work at Vuga. How is it there? And are you sick of painting all day at work and then again after? It was not able to do that and quit that back in Canada. Um, no, I'm not because it's also switching quite a lot. So I, I not only paint all day, I also draw, for example, like in a moment. Uh, today I drew all day. I need to do sketches all day, um, also for the last two weeks. And then like when that's done, I, I uh, need, to, need to paint again. So um, the, the, the way of how it is adjusting and changing, it's quite okay. Um, I don't mind that. And yeah, I mean, the, maybe the topic, like having the same type of time area and then can get a little bit like uninteresting. But everything I save in terms of creative energy, I can uh, I can do that for my own stuff, you know.
So let me merge that boy again. And um, let me quickly get some more to drink. We'll be back in a couple minutes. Be right back. Let me read the chat. Okay, that's good. When I guess it didn't work for me, but I, it was always in the animation industry for TV, so it was maybe a bit too different though. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I work on, on a game, but I don't know, at the end, it's all backgrounds, right? Big fan of Vuga. I've applied a bunch of times, but it never worked out. Boo! <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, 
I don't know, just try it again. If they see that you are interested in working for the company and you're the right fit for the project, why not? I think like remembering from your stuff, from your work, I think you definitely can do that. Oh, Celine, what a, ho what a heavy question do you ask me? It's way too late for that type of question. <laughs> What's my ultimate goal? Um, what is your ultimate goal when it comes to your career? Do or are you more the kind of seek of opportunities at stages you're at? Um, what is my ultimate goal? Um, my ultimate goal is r rich, being rich on time and being financial independent and having artistic freedom. That's my mantra. Hey Jonathan, welcome to the stream. Ah, you don't work as an artist as main job anymore. That's interesting. Where do you work now? Yeah, it's it's a very tr tricky question. No, don't be sorry. I was just uh, I was just um, trash talking. Um, it's a uh, I would say that really changed. But um, as I said, it's for me. It's really I want to I want to gain as much knowledge and financial base that I are able to decide when I want to work, where I want to work, what I want to work on. So for example, when I have kids one day that I can decide, okay, I don't want to work all day. I want to w spend time with them. You know, that's my ultimate goal. Definitely. Most definitely. All right. Let's add a little bit of stuff here. To be honest, it feels like that we're not going to go very far with the, this, here today i mean we came pretty far but it seems like we will not finish it today as i wanted it to I'm an agile course coach at a company in Berlin that does graphics and data visualization. What is the name of the company? Hey, Philip, uh, thanks for the like and welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing good, man.
Okay, um... I'm also feeling like the energy is going very low. But I'm not gonna quit yet. Don't worry. We just have to rethink about our study before that I hit the values and colors. I guess it would be fun to paint that a little bit more even. To push that even further. It's also a good a good warm up for me for the project. How does it look without a sketch? Oh, there's nothing in it. <laughs> but we will get there. Okay, um, let me rethink. Ah, we also had this here, right? So I can use this. So the light is coming through. So let's add a little bit of color info. So certain lights here. We can also add a little bit more foliage. Could also add foliage here. Could be nice. It's just important that it's not too much. Hmm. I keep that for later. I don't want to commit to anything now. I think I lower the sketch again. And for everyone who just joined, um, what we did today we it was a continuation of um, the painting study we did in the last stream. Also the videos on YouTube, so if you miss it, don't worry, just watch it. And today we continued our study and now what we do, we apply the informations we, we earned from, I say earned because we earned it. Um, now we apply basically the knowledge we just um, learned on the, on the study without looking at the study, just having our notes. And um, and at a, on a certain point, we can start to look also to put put our study here in here just to to see if we're on the right direction. Because at the end, it doesn't matter. Then okay, let me think about the light shapes. So we had a little bit of white also the white parts. And I think this here needs to be darker. Also on the study we had this very interesting light shafts from the tree branches so maybe we can do that as well here. Maybe this is a bit too much, maybe this needs to be in shadow. Then we also have the foreground bush. And then we can also make a couple bushes in the midground just to sell um, like perspective scaling. So we basically just indicate the same shape as we have here in the foreground. Dun, 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 dun. Do we want to add a window here? I'm not sure because I don't want too much contrast on this house here. It's not a setting point. So we also quickly came up with a very fast story idea for this piece because um, yeah, this here is just a demo 
to show how to apply the knowledge from a study. But we also sketched out this thing very ugly, very fast. <laughs> um, but it's very important that you think about some sort of story you want to tell. Also, let's silhouette out this bad boy here. Well, it's maybe a bit too dark. Maybe we give him a brown tone. <laughs> Just keep that roughly in here for just for scale. <laughs> and now we can really lose ourselves into painting. Just having fun with that. Also, um, as we planned in the sketch, here could be Here's the shadow, but first let's block out a nice silhouette. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. To be honest, I haven't decided if that's some sort of concrete here or if it's wood. Maybe like this. I mean, right now also the light is pretty orange, which means it seems a bit like late, late golden hour. And on the study, it was actually more yellow. So maybe we add a little bit more yellow to it and bright up the whole thing. I mean, I have nothing against the mood we have right now. I just want to see how it looks. Let me just see that. Sure, I just leave it in there. It's okay for now. All right, let me think. Do I forgot something about the study? So um, we definitely need to work on the debit light on the ground, of course. Um, white highlights, um, then warm light and cool shadows. Yeah, we need to make sure that the shadows are a bit cooler, definitely. Yeah, and triangle light shapes. So maybe it's also time to just pull up our study now and to to look. Oh, I'm um, sorry, sorry, sorry. I missed the chat. Um, also, bam, <laughs> uh, um, bam, 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 bam. How many people do we have still? Um, Fifteen people watching. Twelve on YouTube and four on Twitch. Sepera, hmm. I don't know. I don't know the company. But I mean, there are so many comp companies these days, right? Hey, Jonathan, thanks. Thanks, thank, thank you very much. Hannah, this painting looks so beautiful already. It would take me like four days to do that. The light looks magical. That's awesome that you say that because uh, we wanted to achieve that. Um, uh, so maybe we continue with the painting then Also on the next stream Zoe you gotta go um, when the next stream will be definitely next week on Wednesday um, and Yeah, last week I streamed twice uh, Wednesday and Saturday evening. So the other day would be Saturday but uh, I need to step down a little bit just to also refill refill my energy so um, I would say Wednesday next week. I also have uh, video footage which I need to edit, like interviews and stuff for the YouTube channel. So yeah, let's say Wednesday next week. But uh, thanks for joining, Zoe. Awesome. 
Have a good night, Zoe. Hannah, what are you doing? Are you back to study mode? You too, Zoe. Thank you. Celine, is Celine still here? Celine. Yeah, you, Hannah. What are you doing? Do you stu do you study? Ah, okay. I accept that. Did you have a good day, Anna? Right. Um, so now uh, that we now we can actually start to check back um, how how well we did in terms of um, accumulating our study. I would say our image is a little bit too dark and a little bit too orangey in terms of light, but it's totally fine. I think it's still in the the ratio of possible let me actually duplicate the study where's the study painting study here where's the study let me do oh my god no that's that's the reference of the study we want the painting study there's the painting study okay let me merge the painting study boom and what we can do now we double check we double check what we oh did i merge it with the, with the sketch no okay so now we take our study here <sighs> don't have any place canvas is too small <laughs> Okay, let's move the study a bit to the left. All right, so as we see, I just scale it down here. Oh, let's move it up here, actually. That's also not bad. Oh, it's, it's, sorry, it's too late. It's just too late. Um, okay. So yeah, as I said, it's our image is a bit too dark and the light is a bit too orangey. But that's still okay. We because we just didn't, we haven't done much. Um, but what is cool is we could use the value and the colors of the tree for all the wooden elements. And um, yeah, what you could also do. I mean, if you painted a study already, you technically could take just the image of your study now and just put it on top. Um, Ah, Celine is still there. Good night for one zero HA. Oh, you had a good day, Anna. That's nice. I also had a good day. Very productive. Just a lot of stuff. So, um, yeah. So and now it's really like double checking our study, seeing, okay, we studied that light environment. And I think it would better if we go for go more for this light we had in the study. It's just it, I think it just would work a little bit better. So of course you could technically also like pick now from the study because I mean we did the work already, um, and it's just interesting to see okay what did we kept in our head. Um, so um, we can also. Just to save time, we can take a little bit of this part here without repainting everything. Because we also did the work already. Just 
need to make sure it works in scale. But considering maybe, yeah, maybe like this. So now we just continue using our study and it's not forbidden guys to take your study as a direct reference because you 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 learned it, the stuff you wanted to know already now it's really now it's really the application of that so it also shows me like I can work a little bit better on my light and shadow shapes so we are just saving time here. So maybe add this here. And we just take it also as a base. I mean, see, I, gr I grabbed the tone from the study and it's technically the tone we picked for the big mass here, which is good. So it means like the information stayed in the head. And what we could think um, maybe to add certain elements like we have with the trees here in the foreground could be interesting. But that's now really up to you. Like now it's like you, the artist, you have the all the artistic freedom to decide and choose whatever you want to do please let me know if um, that is understandable and if that makes sense Come on, Photoshop. What are you doing to me? Photoshop is so laggy. <sighs> Come on, boy.
so we need to also make sure that the dark darkness in terms of values is working seems like it got a little bit too bright here on the left side Photoshop. So we need to work on that gate definitely. But maybe that we can do on the next stream. <laughs> hey Kingo Kid, I love you too. Wherever you are. I have love for all the people. Oh, damn, come on. Photoshop is really messing with me right now. Alright, um, so I think we came pretty far today, but it is almost the end of what I wanted to call a day. So I think it is really a good time now to finish stream for today. I hope you peeps could learn something um, and that was helpful for you. I would say let's just uh, continue on the next stream finishing or just spending another stream on that on that image um, just to push it a little bit more just for fun so we have a, a nice image which we can wrap out a uh, wrap up maybe I also can show you some nice um, finishing tips and tricks um, for the image and yeah it, it looks a little bit like um, a bit mix of everything at the moment but yeah if I would just give it like one or two hours more work um, it would definitely look better and yeah if uh, if you are not a part of the art community but I think most of you are already feel free to join our art community um, you can share your artwork, you can ask for a crit. Um, don't be anxious, you can share whatever you want there um, in terms of art. So uh, yeah, feel free to join. Also, yeah, uh, again, I hope you all had a, a good, a, a relatively solid learning today. Um, I hope that was helpful. Thanks, Miss Boy. Thank you. Thanks, Hannah. I'm happy that it was helpful. Um, yeah, it was a long day for me though, so it's good that the day is gonna end. Yeah, so um, again, I hope it was helpful. And if you have uh, friends who might find this helpful, also uh, feel free to share the video with them. That will just help me and help the channel. And yeah, otherwise I wish you all a wonderful evening or day, wherever you are. And I hope to see you soon on the next stream.
Take care, everyone. Good night, Celine. Good night, Hannah. Good night, Kingo Kid. Good night, everyone. Take care. Ciao, ciao.